of this report after the joint meeting of the deacon and the trustee board of the tabernacle of Friday night, <clears throat> we are reading these resolutions, which will pertain to every man, every woman, that as an endorsed follower of this ministry would like to know the mind of the board, the pastor, and the associate pastor, I read these resolutions this morning. <clears throat> Everyone give as earnest heed and attention to it as you can. <clears throat> these resolutions were made and passed by the board of trustees and deacons in full agreement with the pastor and the assistant pastor. All tapes of Reverend William Branham's sermons are to be made by Fred Sothman only until further notified by the board. We do not at this time recognize any free tape ministry. These tapes are franchised and cannot be reproduced by any other person than Fred Sothman without his written permission. Number two. No person holding meetings, selling books or tapes, writing tracts, giving out prayer cloths or cards of any kind, or soliciting any gifts, are not recognized by this church or its pastor. They are doing this under false pretense and have not been given the authority to do so. Three, this church does not send out any ministers other than its pastor, Reverend William Branham, to hold services elsewhere. The reasons for these resolutions are as follows. <clears throat> it has been brought to our attention that ministers are crossing the country, entering into other fellowships, saying they are associated with and are sent out by this church to hold these meetings. It has also been brought to our attention that people are printing cards and tracts, sending out prayer clause and so forth, as though they were authorized to do so by this church and its pastor, which is not true. It will be appreciated if you will notify the church of any person found doing this. These resolutions have been read and approved by the pastor, Reverend William Branham, associate pastor, Reverend Armand Neville, and the trustee and deacon board. May the Lord bless you. Father, we are grateful this morning that we can believe. It's been made possible by the shed blood of thy Son, Jesus, that we would be partakers of his grace and become sons and daughters of God through his obedience to death at the cross, be justified by believing on him and his resurrection, and now the Holy Spirit shed abroad in our hearts. We are grateful for this opportunity to come here this morning to share our thoughts and our adorations, expressions by songs, testimonies, reading of psalms, reading of thy word, and waiting solemnly upon the Holy Spirit to deliver to us the message appointed for this hour. Grant it, Lord. May we profit by being here today. And when we leave the building, may we say like those coming from Emmaus, did not our hearts burn within us as he spoke to us this morning? Grant these things, eternal God, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Be seated. 
Good morning, friends. Here out here in the tabernacle and to our friends out across the nation, all the way from the west coast again this morning to the east coast and north and south on the telephone hookups. It's a nice day here in Indiana, a little slightly cloudy, cool, very fine. Tabernacles packed out into the yards and around the walls. We're under great expectations Amen. for the Lord to visit us today. And we hope that God has given you a fine day wherever you are. And it is a good day for the Lord has given it. No matter what the weather is, it's a good day. We're happy to be here. Happy yet that we have the opportunity to express to the world our faith in Jesus Christ. And they, we want to take every opportunity we can to give our expressions of His love and what He's done for us. Today, we are. I was given a few moments ago uh, an announcement to make, and then I've got a few things here I'd like to say. And one of them, the announcement was given me concerning a board meeting the other night, and there's been one a deacon from the church that's tuck up resident and. Arizona, which is Brother Collins, our noble brother. And while he's away, uh, they, the board has appointed uh, Brother Charlie Cox to take his place while he's gone. And Brother Charlie Cox is officially appointed by the trustee or the deacon board of this church to take the office of Brother Collins in his absence. And a thing I want to say again, I want to thank all you people, because some of you may go home before the healing service tonight, for the nice little gifts, tokens. Much food has been brought to us since we've been here, and from my wife and I and my family, we certainly appreciate it. Sometimes I forget to even say anything about it. It's so busy, you know, my mind is in such a whirl all the time. You can imagine what it is of uh, people, not only from right here at this church, but from around the world, see. And it sort of keeps it in a whirl all the time. Someone is saying about the dedication of the babies and baptismal services and so forth. That's very fine. Wish I could do it. But it's just so, so twisting. I, I hardly have time. I've got to keep my mind right on this, this message. You know, the Bible said... To the apostles, or the apostles, rather, uh, in the Bible, said, Go look yourself out among you, a man of good report and honest and filled with the Holy Ghost, that they might attend to the affairs. And I told Billy, he said, You go to dedicate the baby this time, Daddy? I said, Oh, my. <laughs> if we got many of them waiting to be dedicated, and that's right. I just have to come back and take a special day for dedication of babies. So uh, I'd like to do that. Now, but we want to thank each one of you from our hearts, wife, I, and our family. The people bring us canned goods, fresh butter beans, watermelons, cantaloupes, all oh, strawberries, just anything could be thought of, they bring it. The precious brother and his sister that they brought us a great big turkey. I'm still eating on it. <laughs> and so just, um, oh, and I'll have to clean it up before I leave, I guess. <laughs> if we don't, she'll take it right with us. And so, uh, so we'll, um, we're certainly appreciative of these things. I know many of the people, some of them I don't know. They'll be laying on the porch when we come in. And so I certainly appreciate it. And many I know, I've, got, I've seen many, and there's many that I don't get to see. I, I'm sure that everybody understands. I, I'd like to get to everyone if I could, but I'm only one. <laughs> To, uh, I can't get to everyone. I'm doing everything I know how to do it. So, God be with you. I'm sure that there's one that will be with you. That's Jesus Christ. And He can be. He's the only person that's omnipresent, and He's also omnipotent. So He can supply every need. And uh, omnipotent also knows your needs, uh, of what you have need of. And I command everyone that I will not have been getting as fast as could even since I've been here this morning, and I'll get everyone that I can. And if what I miss, the omnipotent God will, will supply all your needs according to His uh, riches and glory. I 
can't read that too well. Just a special announcement of some sort, and I think Billy Paul must have wrote it. <laughs> He's like me. I can't even read my own writing, and so I have a shorthand all of my own. <laughs> and uh, if you'd see some of my uh, text here wrote on here, you think you'd ever understand that? <laughs> I have like a star crossing a bridge and so forth, just all. Tell Brother Dare from Arkansas to see Perry Green at the rear of the church of Meadow. Brother uh, uh, Dare, Dare of Arkansas to see uh, Reverend Perry Green at the back of the church immediately. All right? Now, so another thing that I would, um, would like to announce here is... Um, is that uh, this tonight now for the healing services. We're going to pray for the six tonight. tonight. And um, so I, I trust that you'll be here. And we send the greetings to all the people uh, out across the land in the name of the Lord Jesus, that God will bless you this morning. Some of you are up towards noon up in New York. It is about noontime. And out in Arizona, the West Coast, it's only about 7 o'clock. So there's, and here we're right in between. So God bless you as you listen. Now this may be, I've tucked it up on my heart while being here and was not allowed to have the auditoriums. And finally, they kind of give us permission we could have one service, but we should not pray for any sick. I, I don't, that's my ministry. I have to do what the Holy Spirit tells me to do. So um, I refused it because it's, I want to be at liberty to do whatever the Holy Spirit says do, see. So I thought we can uh, suffer one more day anyhow in the tabernacle. And uh, it's cool this morning. The Lord has just made a fine day for us here, so we're thankful. Now, in doing this, I have come here for the purpose of teaching the last vials, last seven vials, and the last seven uh, trumpets, and the last seven thunders uh, of the book of Revelation is tying them together in this hour that we're now living to follow the opening of the seven seals of seven church ages. So we couldn't get room to do it. So I, I hope that soon as I can, we we'll, can get a place uh, sufficient for that, either here or Louisville, New Albany, or either put up a tent so we can just stay as long as the Lord leads us to do but in this now, I took this opportunity to express to the people my belief and faith in God and then bringing you to the hour that we're living in. And by this, it's not appointed uh, to any certain person, creeds, whatever it might be. It's just as I see God's Word. And... Last Sunday, we had a very uh, fine outpouring of the Spirit upon the Word. It was very lengthy, and I hated to stay that long, but yet we don't know what time that we're going to meet for our last time. And we must as want to be, I want to be rather, as Paul said of old, I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Jesus said he kept nothing back from his disciples. And as I so busy with trying to stay under the anointing of the Holy Spirit to find what the, the hour, or the message of the hour is, I sometimes fail to get out and do my duties as a servant of Christ, as a minister. But I've got several men who try to help me to do this, to which I'm thankful for, all my minister brothers. Now, I don't mean to try to keep people. If you out into the land where the message is going could stand and look around this church this morning in the aisles of nurseries, outside, radios on, in uh, buses, trailers, and so forth, and automobiles, you would see what the problem is. And then each service Many, many driving by and calling and so forth. They couldn't get in or around. And we need more room so that people can sit and be comfortable and then to bring down to a, a message that I think is so vitally important 
I feel that we ought to everyone be comfortable and seated and so we can listen with our pencils and paper and notes and Bible and so forth to take down the, the notes. But this way I thought I would go back on the time that we have, we're living in and try to bring some of these things that you're going to meet and you're going to need them. If I come here today or any other day or any other minister to try to bring a message to a people, a dying people as we are, and the time so close at hand as I believe for this day, I'd be a hypocrite to try to bring something that I know that you would be pleased with and be against God's Word or something to draw a crowd or, or something like that. Uh, I wouldn't be... Uh, I wouldn't be what I, I'm here to be, a minister of Christ. I want to bring something that I think is a vital use to you. Not just right. to be seen, but to think it's something that if I die today, tomorrow, it'll be anchored in your heart to go on and serve God. Now, I want to say that there's something just getting ready to happen. I know it. Many of you here remember when Brother Junior Jackson come to me a little bit before going towards Arizona of a dream he had, a strange thing. How many remembers that? And the Lord gave us the interpretation, and it happened to the letter. Now, he just had another dream, something. And the strange thing, a man was sure the day from Oregon, doesn't hardly know me, and was dream the same dream about the junior jackson dream and and come told me I, I don't know the interpretation i'm waiting for the lord but i know it's going to be something from god just remember that thus saith the lord it's something coming forth from god i don't know what it is really striking very striking frankly according to the the dreams that both men, one of them, I'd, he might be a Baptist Presbyterian. He, he might be sitting here this morning. I don't know his share of the day. I don't know the man. But he told a dream with tears in his eyes. It shook him. He come all the way from Oregon here to express it. Brother Jackson come in like manner this morning, one man not knowing the other, one thousands of miles from the other, and both dreams just exactly on the same thing. So the Holy Spirit is withholding the interpretation thereof from me. I don't know what to tell the man, but I know God is fixing to do something, and it'll be glorious in our eyes. Now, the message this morning, I want to read from the book of Galatians. I don't preach or just, it's a Sunday school lesson. Now, you man... Women are standing along the walls and somebody wants to swap and let you sit down a while or something. I, you won't bother me. Just be reverently. And if the mothers or little ones cry or something, someone will step out of the nursery so they can have room for the little one. And now you get your pencil, Bible, and ready for to take down some of the scriptures that we will read. I don't want you to feel bound down. I don't want you to feel... I want you to feel at liberty to sit and study. And you might disagree, which is all right. But I'm only speaking this across the nation this morning so that the peoples that has believed the message that the Lord Jesus has given me for this hour might know what's taking place and placing it in the Scripture. Last Sunday, we spoke on the anointed ones in the last day. And if you're any of your tape listeners, be sure to get that tape. Not that we want to sell tapes. That isn't the idea. It's the idea of getting the message out. See? See? If you've got a tape machine, get a group of people together and play it and listen close. The uh, anointed ones. You hear people raise up say, Oh, the Bible said the last days false prophets would rise and do these signs? That's exactly the Scripture. Then where does that apply? It's got to be applied right. Tonight I want to speak on if the Lord's willing of God revealed in His own Word 
how that the eye cannot be applied where the ear ought to be. See? Just like printing the whole Bible. And in the whole Bible, pictures Jesus Christ. So I want to speak on that tonight, the Lord willing. And now, if not, some later date. Now in the book of Galatians, and in the book of 2 Corinthians 4, 1 to 6, and Galatians 1, 1 to 4, I wish to read some scripture. Now in Galatians 1, 1 to 4, Paul, an apostle, what's the stopping right quick? Apostle means one cent or a missionary. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, in the book of Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to read from one to six verses. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commanding ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost, if that don't bring in predestination, I don't know what does. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Same as it was at the Garden of Eden. Put them forth, lest they touch that tree. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ. Christ Jesus the Lord, ourselves your servants, for Christ's sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts and give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. So reads the word. Now my text this morning is the God of this evil age. We have read it in the scriptures, the God of this world, this evil age. Now, this message points out the evils of this evil age, and it is fitting to prophecy for this evil age. And it's my belief that ever that the Bible has ever answered for ever age already written in the Bible for the believer of that age. Believe it, everything that we have need of is written right here. Just needs to be interpreted by the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that any man on earth has a right to put his own interpretation to the Word. Amen. God doesn't need anybody to interpret His Word. He's His own interpreter. Amen. He said He would do it, and He does it. Amen. As I've said many times, He said, A virgin shall conceive. He spoke that through the lips of a prophet, and she did. Nobody has to interpret that. In the beginning, he said, let there be light, and there was. Nobody has to interpret it. He said, in the last days, he had poured out his Spirit upon all flesh, and he did. Don't need any interpreting. He said, in the last days, these things that we see happening out would be here. You don't need any interpreting. It's already interpreted. See? Now, notice closely now as we study the Word. The God of this evil age that we're now living may seem strange, a very strange thing in this age of grace. When God is taking a people for his namesake, that is his bride, in this evil age that should be called the age of evil, 
the very age that God is calling a people for his namesake by grace out and is called an evil age. Now, we'll prove by the Bible that this is the age that he was speaking on. Very strange thing to think that, that in an evil age like this, that God then would be calling his bride. Do you notice? He said, a people, not a church. Why? Yet it's called the church. But he would call a people. Now, a church is a gathering of many people, of all different makeups. But God is calling one here. He didn't say, I'll call the Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal. He said, He'd call a people. What for? His name. See, a people. One from the Methodist, one from the Baptist, one from the Lutheran, one from the Catholic. See? But he's calling not a church group, but a people for his name that receives his name, engaged in his name, going to a wedding to be married, to him to become part of him. By predestination, just as a man that chooses a right wife in life is ordained to be part of his body. So that is, the bride of Christ will be and is now from old ordained by God to be a part of that body. Oh, the scriptures are so rich, full of honey. Notice, not what someone has said, what someone called, but what God chose before the foundation of the world and is calling these people in the last days, not an organization, a people for his name. And this evil age is when he's doing it. This very age of deception. Last week in Matthew 24, it was the most deceiving age of all ages. All the ages of deceit from the Garden of Eden. All the way down, there's never been an age so deceptive as this age. False prophets will rise and show signs and wonders, if possible, to deceive the very elected. Hmm? Now, just the cold, formal, starchy churches and so forth of man-made theology, that would, the elect would never pay no attention to that. But it's up there almost like the real thing. Just leaving out one word is all you have to do. Promise of the age. Very great time Christians ever were. Take heed to the hour we're living. Mark down and read and listen close. What would God call a people out of this evil age for his name? The reason it is, is to try her, his bride. It's the, when she is made manifest, been tried, is proven, proved to Satan like it was at the beginning, so shall it be at the end. As a seed starts in the ground, it comes up through carriers, the life of it. But it ends up the same seed that it was when it went in the ground. And the same way the seed of deceit fell in the ground and Eden is the same way it ends up in the last days. Just as the gospel was. When it fell to a denomination at Nicaea, Rome, it ends up in a super organization. Just as the seed of the church fell back there with the signs, wonders, and the living Christ among them, it ends up in the last days under the ministry of Malachi 4 and restores back again the original faith that was once given. We find now this evil age is to prove to Satan she is not like Eve. That she is not that type of a woman. And... 
she will be tried by his word, the bride, as Adam's bride was tried by the word. And Adam's bride believed every bit of the word, all but confused on one promise. That he's the same yesterday today, and forever today. But failed on one promise. Under the temptation of the enemy, face to face. And now the people that's called for his name, of course, is his bride. She is to come in contact again by the same thing. Not by just a nominational truth or something, but a every word. For in the beginning of the Bible, man was given the word of God to live by one word misinterpreted by a, a man called Satan in a person of an animal called the serpent. Satan in this person could talk to Eve and misinterpreted the word to her and was lost. It must be every word. In the middle of the Bible, Jesus come and said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. When he was tempted by Satan. Now God telling us here in the last days that the God of this world will rise up in the last days. And whosoever shall add one word to it or take one word from it, his part will be taken from the book of life. God, be merciful to us. Let us not walk as stiff shirts, chest stuck out, head up, know it all. For we too one time were in disobedience. Let us with grace and mercy and feeling in our heart towards God humbly come to the throne of grace. Strange. Now, after some 1900 years of gospel preaching, and now she, that is the world system, is more evil than in the days when, that, when he was here. The world system is more evil. The world is heading to a great climax. You know that. The Lord is fulfilling His Word on every hand. Yesterday standing, I hope the little fellow I don't, you want. I'd come with my wife and Mrs. Woods, Brother Roy Roberson somewhere here, Brother Woods, we'd stopped in over here at this little young town shopping center to get a, a package that Sister Woods had. And uh, on, while we stand there, a young fellow walked up and introduced himself, a stranger to me. Another young man walked up and said they were from either Alabama, Georgia, I believe Georgia, because I asked them if they know our brother Welch Evans. And we talked a few minutes. And when I went to leave, this young man looked at me as the young other fellow and his little boy walked away. This young man looked at me and said, just one thing I want to say. I said, are, are you a believer? Are you a Christian? He said, no, sir. He said, I, I might not quote just the word he said here, but he might have been a little skeptic. I asked him about the things of the angel of the Lord appearing. He said he'd heard about it, but he'd never been in church before, this church. I said, do you believe it? He said, yes, sir. He said, I, I've been watching something. Said so people's been telling me about these predictions and things, and I heard on a tape that you predicted how California would crack away like that. And said so when I saw that in the paper, then I believed it. He said I'm coming today or tomorrow. That's today for my first time. I said the Lord bless you, son. Has started to shake his hand. He said I want to say something to you, sir. He said I'm as lost as lost can be. He said I'm like a coin. In a sand pile. Lost. I said, but you don't have to stay that way. There's someone standing present now who can find you the minute that you're ready to be found. He said, I'm ready. I said, would you bow your head? He said, I'm not ashamed. Not only that, but he got out on his knees there in that parking lot before all the peoples. People on the street watched him there. We prayed with him till he gave God his heart. 
He come up a sinner, went back a child of God. He walked up the side of a car dead and went back alive. I said, the pool will be open tomorrow. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. I said, rise and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, calling upon the name of the Lord. God will fill you with the Holy Spirit and give to you these great things and make you so you can see it. What is it? The world's heading to a climax. Why? The spirit of lawlessness, moral decay, scientific religion has led it to the cage of ever hateful and unclean birds. As the Bible said, let's read it, Revelations 18, just while we're getting this point started. We get Revelations 18, 1 to 5. I think I've got that marked right. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice. Now you people that had the dream saying, Babylon, the great is falling, is falling, and is become the habitation of devils, and the whole of every foul spirit, a cage of ever unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drank of the wine of the wrath of her church, fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornications with her, and the merchants of the earth has Wax rich through the abundance of her delicacy. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, that you receive not of her plagues, for her sin has reached into heaven, and God remembers her iniquity. What a warning. That throws the church exactly back to Revelation 3.14 to the lady of sin and age. Lawlessness, real religious, but lawlessness, thou because thou sayest that we are rich, have need of nothing. Knowest thou not that thou art naked, miserable, blind, and knows it not. Perfectly with the scripture of this age, not for the scripture of the age of Daniel. Not for the ones in the name of uh, the age of Noah, but in this last evil age. Notice here, thou art naked. Let that soak real deep. I know I may have much disagreement on this thought, but it's got to a place that a Christian can hardly walk out of his house and not be uh, brought in the presence of this evil age by unsufficient dressed women. Uh, women, I'm going to say this and I want you to listen. And man and women, you might disagree with this, but I feel led to say it. Did you know any woman that undresses herself like that is not in her right mind? Do you know she is, whether she believes it or not or thinks it or not, she is a prostitute? Though the woman might stand with her hand before God and swear that she's never been touched by any other man but her husband, and that might be the honest truth, but still she is a prostitute. Jesus said, Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already. And the woman may be, see, she's naked, the Bible said, and don't know it. The Spirit that's anointing her to do such things is a evil prostitute spirit. Her outward being, her physical body, her flesh, she might be clean. She might not commit any adultery and could swear to God and be the truth that she never... But her spirit is a prostitute spirit. 
she has been so blinded by the God of this world of fashion, she dressed herself sexy and got out there. The other day, Brother Woods and I were putting our boat in the river. I get away from the house for a few minutes to go up on the river. And wherever you went, women with these little uh, bunches of called kenias or something around them, that is a disgrace. A woman can't be in her right mind and put on anything like that. She is possessed with a prostitute spirit. Now, you settle that with God, lady. Well, you'll find out someday that that is th the truth. Amen. How could you, a lady, knowing how sacred your body is, and expose it out there to these lustful, sinful devils that walk the street of this day? If sons of God was all still sons of God, your husband was a son of God, he'd either make you put on clothes or leave you. If a boy was the son of God, he'd never marry such a thing. See? You say you're making... No, I'm telling you the truth. Amen. And someday you'll meet it. Naked. Adulterous. Don't know it. Oh, I swear that I never touched past the bowels of my husband. Your husband will judge you for it if you did. But God will judge you. But what kind of a spirit you got in you? Not judge you by your body, but by your spirit. That inner man. The outside man is a physical being which is controlled by six senses. Or five senses, rather. The inside man is a spirit man which is controlled by five senses. Conscience and love and so forth. The outside man, see, taste, feel, smell here. But the inside of that spirit is the soul. And it's controlled by one thing, your free will. You can accept what the devil says or accept what God says. And that will determine what spirit's in there. If it's the Spirit of God, it'll feed on the things of God. And it won't feed on anything in the world. Amen. Jesus said, if you love the world or the things of the world, it's because the love of God's not even entered this inner part. Satan's deceived you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Notice. Now, we find that she is naked, lewd, and nude. And the world seems to be in the most evil age. It ever, never in any age did women ever act like that. Never. But just before the destruction of the Andalusian world. And Jesus referred to it. We'll get to that after a while. <clears throat> Has God lost control? Or is He just permitting another agency to control? I wonder. The true answer to this question is, to my opinion, there is two opposing spirits in the world today at work. Now, there can't be no more than two, <coughs> two heads. And one of them is the Holy Spirit at work. The other one is the spirit of the devil, and in this last days, in deception. Now, I'm going to base my thoughts right on here for the rest of the text, the rest of the, our message. The two spirits, one of them, God's Holy Spirit. The other one, the devil's spirit working in deception. The people of the earth are now making their choice. The Holy Spirit is here calling out a bride for Christ. He's doing it by vindicating His word of promise to her for this age, showing that it is Christ. If the finger is supposed to move in this age, the finger will move. If the foot's supposed to move in this age, the foot will move. If the eye is to see in this age, the eye will see. See? The Spirit of God, as it's grown into the full statue of God, is the age that we're now living in. The Holy Spirit is here, 
vindicating the message of the hour. And the Holy Spirit is doing this so that the people that believe God will be called out of this chaos. The devil's unholy spirit is here calling his church by the error, as usual, by perversion of the Word of God like he did at the beginning. See, coming right back to that seed time again from Eden, here it is again. Now back to there, you blo- other ages, you belong to denominations, you belong to this, that, or the other. What happened to the denominational stalk? It dries up. The Spirit keeps leaving it, going on. And it heads up in a seed. You see, and the temptation of both heads back the same way it was at the beginning. Notice, don't, don't, know, don't forget it now. Uh, John, 1 John 4, 5, and 6, if you want to put that down, he puts it, the spirit of error. Eve never just simply walked out willfully say, I don't believe in God. No, it was an error she believed. Satan never come out and said, oh, well, that's not even the Word of God. He admitted it was the Word of God. But he put his own interpretation to it, which God plainly told him not to do it. What does this do? It makes a strong delusion for the people to believe a lie and be damned by it. Now, if you want to read that, 2 Thessalonians 2.11. As I have about quite a few scriptures here, and we won't be able to read them all one now and then, I'll give them to you as... It seems strange that you question it or something, and we might put it down and read for your, uh, your good. Making a strong delusion, as the Bible said it would. Second Thessalonians. Uh, this man of sin would come into existence and sit in the temple of God, showing himself he was God, and cause the people to go into strong delusions, to believe a lie and believe it would be damned by it. That's the same thing he did to Eve. Give her, never, never told her the word wasn't right, but give her a strong delusion that she believed a lie. The spirit of delusion is of the devil. Devil's now working in the children of disobedience. Disobedient to what? What's the children of this day disobedient to? Like Eve was at the beginning. The true Word of God. That's right. Now, if you would want to get that, let's turn to it. Ephesians 2. Just a minute, because it seems good that we uh, stop this thing if you're in no big hurry and read some of this. Ephesians 2, 1 to 2. And you has he quickened who were once dead in trespasses and sin. Wherein at times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Amen. Children of disobedience. And if the Antichrist beginning there in the infancy of disobedience, what will it be when it heads up in the person of the Antichrist? How deceptive it will be. How much more powerful of deception could a, an adult give to the world than an infant child? And he said the spirit of, de, uh, of delusion now working in the children of disobedient, disobedient to the Word. Notice. Now, I want to dwell on this just a minute. The children of disobedience, a child. Did you know you, your beginning, I can prove by God's Word that you, any person in here, was a lie in your great-grandfather. And your great-grandfather, you were produced down to your grandfather, then to your father, and then to you. You know that? The Bible said... I believe it's Hebrews 7, that Melchizedek, when Abraham returned from the slaughter of the kings, 
Abraham paid Melchizedek tithing of all the spoils. And here's Paul saying now that Levi, who received tithes, was yet, he paid tithes. For he was yet in the loins of Abraham when he met Melchizedek. So whatever that Abraham did, then we find that Levi was then in Abraham, which was his great-grandfather. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. Jacob begot the patriarchs. Levi. Now, then you see, here comes into perfect view. Predestination. Uh, in these messages, I want to, to, to emphasize the things that I have told you in the message of this evening light that God said would come upon the earth. And notice, man, the beast that was to come upon the earth would deceive all whose names were not put in the Lamb's book of life slain before the foundation of the world. In God's own thinking, God the great spirit, in the beginning, before there was a beginning, he was God. And did you know you were in him then? If you are a Christian now, you was in him then. And then, if that be so, the whole Godhead bodily shaped up in the person of Jesus Christ. And then, when Jesus died at the cross, I died with him. For I was in him then. For he was the fullness of the Word manifested, knowing that we would be manifested later, and we was at Calvary with him. We went in the grave with him, and we raised with him and his resurrection. And now we've ascended by his Spirit to the throne of grace, setting together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Always. For as the germ of natural life is brought down, germatized from father to father to father to father, so is the life of Christ germatized. That's the reason God uses Elijah's spirit five different times. What is it? It's a handing down. <laughs> Just as your natural life and traits is handed down from the natural breeding of your father, so is the spirit of God that was predestinated before the foundation of the world. And when the entire word of God incomplete was Headed up in a human body called Jesus Christ. In there, God made me pay for my sins in Him there. Then He rose me, raised me up with Him in the resurrection. And now we are seated with Him. With power and authority over every devil. Oh, if you could only believe what God has given but if you're not seated there, you don't have it. And if you're seated there and don't believe and are afraid to move, you'll never use it. But if you are seated there, you will use it. For you're ordained to do what you do. Pharaoh on the other side was raised up for this purpose, the Bible said. To be Pharaoh. Judas Iscariot was raised up to be the son of perdition. Now notice these great truths that we are approaching. Now we see that the church refused to accept God's word to rule over them and accepted Barabbas instead. Now if you want the scripture on that's Matthew twenty seven, fifteen to twenty three. What did this do? What position did this do? Now think of it. When the church world in its organized life of righteous, holy man, as they thought they were and were in the eyes of the people. They crucified Jesus and said, we'll not have this man rule over us. And Jesus was 
the fullness of the Word of God. First John 1 expresses it. And they said, we'll not have this Word of God to rule over us. Yet He was the Word, but their eyes were blinded to what He was. For He was the direct answer to every prophecy that was to come to pass in Him. Now, we all believe that because we're looking back to see it happen. But if the world... Would, it is now, this present evil age, that would have been back there at that time, they'd do the same thing they're doing today because it's still the same word for this age being manifested. Amen. You'll do it. They can't do nothing else. They are children of disobedience, given a strong delusion to believe a lie and be damned by it. Notice, when the church world would not accept Jesus, the Word, manifested of that day because why? They had it interpreted another way. But they ought to have known that He was that Word because everything that God said He would do, He did it. And He said to him, Search the Scriptures for this hour. And if I do not meet the qualification that was spoke for me to do, then don't believe me. They said, we believe Moses. He said, if you would have believed Moses, you would have believed me. For Moses spoke of me. And still they didn't see it. The very God of heaven dying on the cross and saying the same words the prophet said he would say. And still they didn't see it. They were not of His kind. They was not the Word. Not the Word. And they, yet they were, were very religious. But they was not the Word. For it, it would have recognized its place for that hour. Notice how beautiful the Scriptures tie themselves together in every age. Notice now, and when the church world would not have the Word of God to rule over them, they accepted a murder, Barabbas. What did this do? It exalted Satan, the god of this evil age, to the place that he's always wanted. Now, listen. For Satan is not spoke of as a god of any other age but this age. He wasn't spoke of the god of the age of Noah. He wasn't spoke of, of the god of the age of Moses, the God of the age of Elijah. But this evil age, he is the, oh, don't miss it. He is the God of this evil age, worshipped by millions and billions of people. And they don't know it. But let's let the Scripture uncover him this morning. And let's see, then you'll know. Let the Scripture, as in the meetings of discernment, when the Holy Spirit gets among His Word, and He calls out this man and says, You have no business living with this other woman. What did you do that for ten years ago when you run off of that man's wife? What's He doing? Uncovering Him. Exposing Satan. That's got the man bound. Or the woman living with some other a uh, woman's husband, or the sins that they've done, the things that they have done. What does it do? Exposing. The doctors take instruments and try to find what's wrong. They can't do it. We can't tell. But then the Holy Spirit comes out and reveals what He is Amen. and exposes Him. See? That's what the Word of God is. It is a light that shines in darkness. And when... You take a noise in the room, it sounds mysterious. A bunch of something working. And you don't know what it is. Turn on the light. Quickly, crickets, roaches, they are children of the darkness. And when the light flashes, they scatter away. They went out from us because it wasn't of us, the Bible says. 
They cannot live in the light of the world. For the God of heaven has sent his light in this last days that he might lighten the path for his children. That they might not walk in darkness and stumble, but they might walk in the light of the shining of Jesus Christ. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Notice, Satan not called the God of any other age but this age. It was his ambition to be like God from the very beginning. Let's read that. We'll just take your time. Let's go back to, let's see, I got it wrote Isaiah 14. Let's go back here to Isaiah 14 just a minute and see what God said. The God, what Satan did. Isaiah 14, 12, and 14. Notice, how art thou falling from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cast down to the ground which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ex- ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, sons of God now, and I will set also upon the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. It was Satan's ambition to be worshipped like God. He took two-thirds, two-thirds of the stars of heaven, ascended himself above those stars and preached to them and deceived two-thirds of them. You see it? All right. Notice, that's his ambition. And now... He is ready with his careful, selected, educated bride by his own knowledge. See? All painted up in his uh, deceit of big buildings and big denominations and paints of knowledge and theology and smart and intellectual and educated to deceive the whole world and become a god. That's what he's done. All heading up into the person of the Antichrist, which is already crowned the biker of God by his worldly loving scientific bride, all dressed up in pomp of intellectual religious education. She is made religious like him, and by his own interpretation of the Word of God, as he did Eve, and as his son Cain did, now you said, Satan's son, show me one place in the Bible that Cain was ever called Adam's son. The Bible said he was the son of that evil one, serpent seed. All oh, the cover's been tuck off now, brother. The pyramid has been opened as the revelation showed. Notice, what he will do, his thought, he thought God dwelled in worldly beauty. He did that in heaven. Sin never began in the Garden of Eden. It began in heaven when Lucifer, the son of the morning, exalted himself in beauty and wanted a more beautiful kingdom than that of Michael. And he thought that God dwelt in beauty. And notice Cain. He didn't want no blood sacrifice. He come down and offered the fruit or, or the fields of beauty upon his altar. Very religious. Done everything that just exactly like Abel done. Offered a sacrifice. Fell down before God in worship. Obedient in every way. But without the revelation of the Word. And the Word was from the beginning, God's plan. But God revealed by revelation the very thing that He vindicated and punctuated of that was right. Not religion, not an altar, not belonging to church, not making a sacrifice, not being sincere, but by the revelation of the Word of God. God revealing to him what that his mother did not take an apple that a snake giver, but she had a sexual affair with the person of Satan 
in the form of the beast, not a reptile, but the most smartest, subtlest of all the field. The image of man, the only thing that the seed would mix in. Now science is trying to find him and they never will find him because every bone in his body's changed. But the Bible declares it to be so. Notice what this fellow will do now. This fellow, he will sit in the temple of God, that is the church, revealing himself to be God. Now, if you want to read that, that's 2 Thessalonians uh, 2, 3, and 4, in Revelation 13, 4, 11, and 12, where spoke both prophets, both John and Paul, of what he would be in the last days. Now, you read it because I've got wrote down here, but to save time now. The day we are living is called in the Bible the day of man. Man's day. This is not God's day. God is not the God of this earth. The Bible says He isn't. He's the God of heaven. But this is not God's day. This is choosing day. Either live for today and die. Choose God and live. And God is the Word. And the Word is the Word manifested for the hour and the day. Notice, the day of man. If you don't put that down, let's go to read. But 1 Corinthians 5, 1, 5. 1 Corinthians 4, 1, 5. Pardon me. 1 Corinthians 4, 1, and 5. is Paul speaking of being judged by man in man's day. The day... What do you call it the man's day for, you would say? It's the day that the works by the knowledge of man is glorified. Look what all the brag of the communists. Somebody trying to get somebody to the moon. God's trying to get somebody to heaven. But look how they're spending millions and billions and trillions of dollars in a wasted effort. When they get there, they ain't going to find nothing. What's the matter with them? I don't care about the moon. I want to pass the moon so fast I won't even see it. <laughs> Just keep going higher. I want to pass the Milky White Way. Go on. Just keep going. Yes. And the world today is dedicating themselves to the knowledge which came by Satan. And man's day is glorified not by the Word of God, but by the knowledge that he has. Now think that that's soak in, and when you play this tape back on this point here, stop for a while and think. His works are exalted above God's Word and manifested works. The wisdom of Satan, which he... Give to Eve at the beginning. Now listen, don't miss this. The wisdom of Satan is exalted to the throne of worship in man above the vindicated Word of God for the hour. Amen. Our churches prove that. Amen. By their, their seminaries, schools of learning that's learned more than God's Word knows about it, they think. And there, doctor so-and-so and and teacher so-and-so and and professor so-and-so has exalted their own knowledge, so-called, from Satan, truth, above the vindicated promise of God made clear right before them. And man fall for it. See? He has scientific achievements trying to prove God's Word wrong. Just think of that. He, his, that is the man's, theology, explains God's Word to the people and makes it of no effect again like he had it in the denominational age when Jesus appeared on the earth. Jesus said, you hypocrites, you, by your tradition, that's their interpretation, has took the Word of God and made it of no effect to the people. Amen. And that's the same thing they've done today. 
It doesn't have the effect. Notice, they, the people, exalt him above all that's called God. Don't Second Thessalonians say they would do it? And the authority of a denominational church, the people believing that denomination more than they believe God and God is the Word, They'll believe their denominational creed above the Word, which exalts Him above all it's called God. And there's only one God, and that's the Word. All that's called God. So He, as God, sets in the church of the God, proving that He is God because He's got the people worshiping Him. God is the Word. And he exalts himself above all that's called God. And there's only one God, and that God is the Word. Okay? And all that's called God is the God of this age has exalted himself above the true vindicated Word of God. That's St. John 1. See? Above all that's called God, so that he as God sits in the temple of God with authority. Look. And he is praised for it. Oh, God. Let the people, God, see that deception. He is praised for it and solemnly believed by the people of this evil age. Now, do you see the God and His servants of this evil age? Now, let's watch it be manifested. He says He is making a better world For them to live in by his knowledge. Apart from the never failing word of God. But by his coming together in denominations and creeds and intellectual and scientific and so forth. He is making a better world for a man to live in. And ignoring the promise of God that the only time the world will be fit to live in is in the millennium. You know, in my opinion, he's made a better world to sin in instead of live in. Notice, did he do it? He legalized sin. He legalized whiskey drinking, cigarette smoking. And then the churches legalized that a woman could be a member of the church with short hair. Now, may he stop just a minute. She can wear shorts. Wear paints and still belong to his religious group, which is absolutely contrary to the Word of God. Amen. He says it's all right. See his knowledge? What's that got to do with the woman? Just the same as taking the forbidden fruit or not the forbidden fruit. That's what it is. God said not to do it. But he does it. And she believes him. And she loves him for it. She hates God. Her own actions prove she does. She says she loves him, but she loves Satan. She worships a God of fashion, the God of the world, the Hollywood goddesses. She loves him, but she hates the true word of God, which is the only true God there is. Legalizes it. In the churches, there's no harm. Our women can do this, that, or the other. But in the presence of the living God, she's not even permitted to come unless she's repentant. See, he is the God of worldly beauty. He is, she wants to look beautiful. And he is a God of beauty from the beginning. He can and has achieved by his knowledge and science and materials to make beauty for his this model age, this modern age, rather, of evil, he's made beauty. Notice, it's noteworthy to notice at the beginning, Seth and his children never went the scientific way. Now we're going to talk about science for a few minutes. If I say this, not excusing my ignorance, but a bunch of ignoramuses, anything will deny the Word of God. Hmm? Sure. It's noteworthy. Watch it. Seth's children 
never went the scientific route. They were humble herdsmen, farmers, and so forth. But Cain's children did. Why? Inspired by their daddy, the devil. Cain, inspired by his daddy, the devil. And these inspired by that seed coming down. What's the seed of God coming down? Through every age. And watch where it's heading up today. Christians, genuine Christians are not all about scientific research and stuff. No, just a minute, we'll get into that. But Cain's did after the nature of the father, the devil. Full of worldly knowledge, beauty, and science. So forth. Cain's children were scientific. They were educated. They was the players of music instruments, a modern Elvis Presley. Some of this stuff like at the school board that's happened up here in the lane every Saturday night. Builders of city, beautifying women for personal lust as a devil giving women paint and bobbing their hair and put them in the shorts and things like that. They, it's for his own dirty lust. That's pretty flat, but I don't know any other way to say it. Now, we know that Satan's gospel is a gospel of science and progress. He preached it in Eden. Not God. Satan did. The science of progress. Science and progress is Satan's gospel. Look where he's led us to today with it. See? Notice, he preached it in Eden to who? To Adam's bride. And she fell for it. He deceived her into questioning one of God's words. Let's see what he might have said. He must have said, It is not scientific to die in this holy church. (laughs) Or, You will be schooled and educated not to believe in such unreasonable things as death. I don't care if God's word did say it. It's unreasonable. Oh, look at him today. God is a good God. You're in his holy church. Well, you cannot die, but God said you would. That settles it. See him today? Oh, just belong to church. Think what you do or this, that, or the other. Just come to church and be a good member. Cutting your hair, that's nonsense. And wearing shorts and putting on paint and going to dances. And a little beer once in a while won't hurt you as long as you don't indulge in it. Frankly, I wish your children would take it so that they could learn whether they liked it or not. There he is, the God of this age, this evil age. God is a good God. I've heard that so much you'll get sick. God is also a God of justice. He ain't an old doty grandpa that can be pushed around his grandkids don't have any sin. He's a God of justice and holiness. He proved in the Garden of Eden by his first children. You cross that line of one of his words, you're dead. Same thing applies today. And notice, he preached that kind of a scientific, social, educated, progressive gospel to Eve and Adam's bride believed it. And he has succeeded and filling the so-called bride of Christ, the church of the second Adam, with the same arguments. That's right. Oh, it's not, it's not for God. God is too good to do it. Why, as long as you go to church. If thou believest, the devil believes. Not make believes, but he actually believes. He's not saved. If thou believest, <laughs> He tells the second bride, or the second Adam's bride, the same as he told the first, such as now divine healing. There is no such thing. We can prove that. There's never been a case proved. And this baptism in Jesus' name. Now, don't you realize that I'm the authority of the church, he says? 
We settled that at Nicaea, Rome, when them three unclean spirits went out of the dragon, the false prophets, and so forth. We believe there is a trinity of gods. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes, that's as heathen as can be. Amen. You never come before God with such a thing as that. Amen. Try to stand his prayer. Oh, it don't make any difference. If you're baptized in the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost, what difference does it make? It made so much difference. Uncle Paul commanded a bunch of Baptists that they had to be rebaptized in the name of Jesus Christ before the Holy Ghost would ever come on them. And also caused that apostle to scream out and said, if an angel comes from heaven and preaches anything else, let him be cursed. Sure, it makes a difference. Oh, my. There's no such a thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost in these days. That was only for the apostles. It's past. And such a thing as prophets, it's not even known of. Miracles, they're unscientific. Malachi 4, that was for another age. John 14, 12, oh, Jesus didn't really mean that. <laughs> Luke 17, 30, oh, that was just a myth. It's misinterpreted. It wasn't in the original. <laughs> Such Tommy rock. Amen. When God Almighty comes down in our midst and proves it. Amen. When He says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, He proves that so. Amen. Don't care who says not about it, God interprets His own word. Amen. He said He would do this thing in the last days. There will be light in the evening time. And Amen. there is light for the manifestation of the Son of God. The same sun that rises in the east is the same sun that sets in the west. Amen. The prophet said there would be a day that couldn't be called day or night. It's a dismal. The clouds as over the face of the sun. But said about evening time it shall come light again. Amen. The same sun. He's Alpha and Omega. Amen. Same sun that rose in the east was predicted to rise in the west again in the last days just before the day was over. I don't know how they interpret it. God interprets His own Word. He proves it. This is the evening time. It's sad, but she sure fell for it again. Christ's bride fell for it and took the intellectual knowledge of some seminary preacher instead of believing the pure, vindicated Word of God. Now, ministers, I enter in the land where we are. You might disagree with this. I'm not hurting you. I'm, just try- I'm talking to my own group. I'm just trying to, if you want to set in, I'll sure be glad for you to hear it. And then you listen at it. Hallelujah. But I'm just telling them what they have, what they have seen and showed it to them, but God proven it that it's right. Amen. This is the hour. Amen. Don't need anybody to interpret it. Your worldly knowledge don't have anything. You might have a B-A-D, D-A-D, or whatever it might be. It don't mean one thing. Amen. God interprets His Word Himself. He promised it, and here it is. But by the knowledge of seminary, denominational preaching has caused the whole world to wonder after the beast whose deadly wound was healed from pagan to papal. See where she's heading up? She believes it. She believes the knowledge that he tells her. It is, I watch, it is that both engaged brides believe Satan's knowledge against God's Word. The bride of Adam believed Satan's knowledge against God's Word, and the bride of Christ has believed Satan's knowledge in this intellectual evil age against God's Word. And notice, Eve in the natural that believed it and plunged the whole human race to death. The natural bride... Adam, the natural man of the earth, his bride, before he got to her to be wife, plunged the whole human race into death. Whether it's scientific or not, we die just the same because God said we would. Whether you're in Holy Eden or Holy Church or Holy Denomination or whatever it might be, you'll die the day you disbelieve one word of God's word to be the truth. When it's vindicated and proved to you. That's the day you separate yourself from God. Not just a whole sentence, one word. Whosoever shall add one word or take one away, that's the day you die. Notice, Adam's bride caused natural death to her race, the human race, 
And the second Adam's bride, Christ, engaged bride, has plunged the whole church to a denominational death to take the mark of the beast by the scientific, intellectual, big denominations. We're Baptists, we're Presbyterian, we're Pentecostals and so forth. We got this and we own more property. We, we're noted by the government. We're all around the world and all such things. And the best of the mayor of the city and so forth comes to us. Even the president comes to have mass said with us and we comes to this or that or the other. The whole world has been plunged to a spiritual denominational death, the whole church. She's dead. You say you're covering a lot of territory. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, where eight souls were saved. So shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. In the days of Lot, where three was brought out of Sodom. At that day, now there's already a group already out, remember. But as it was then, when the Son of Man will be manifested. Look what, what where we're living. Now, she has called the whole world to accept the scientific leadership of the educational program that Satan has given to her under the name of a church. The leadership of an educational scientific program. I'm picturing to you the God of this world. When she as Eve had the very filling of God's Word in her hand, she could have took God's Word but what did she do with that? Instead of caring for the baptism of the Holy Ghost, let science prove to her that the Holy Ghost is only for the disciples. And instead of keeping divine healing going when she ought to be now raised from the dead and doing great miracles, she's let Satan, under his leadership of religious men, take the Word of God and try to say that it was for another age. And she's believed it. When the Bible said, the things that I do shall you do also. Jesus said that. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We're still creatures. These signs shall follow every one of them that believe. She denies every bit of it. She denies all the supernatural. And she swapped it for his intellectual conception of the Bible. Where priests and holy fathers so-called where bishops, archbishops, where uh, district presbyters, general overseers, and so forth, has put their own interpretation to it, and God has let them sit there dead as 12 o'clock. The only things left in the last days is a bunch of little Pentecostals with a bunch of music hooped up as hard as they can, rubbing them down for floor, speaking in tongues and shouting and having a form of godliness, but denying the word thereof. Amen. Tell them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, laugh in your face. <laughs> but that God goes right on making it so just the same, proving his word to be so. Notice, the tree that Satan caused Eve to partake of was a tree of good and evil. It was a mixed tree. Now look at today we're living in. When he's calling out a bride, he's got a church that claims to be doing good when it's evil by denying the word. A mixed tree. Oh, say they, they have great societies. They, 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 they help the, uh, this and the Red Cross the endorses it and all the schools. They Look at here. Oh, but just deny one word. That's all you have to do to die. No matter how intellectual, how good it is. Jesus said a little leaven leavens the whole lump. One spot of leaven ruins a lump. One word of God displaced spoils the whole picture. What about my arm being where my foot should be? See? What if my ear was down here where my hand should be? A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Say, how do you know it's right? God proves it right. He vindicates it. He said it, you're in the Word, then He proves it. That's how we know it's right or not. Just an eye, one word is all it takes to die. It brought the same results in this evil age, spiritual death, as it did physical death to the whole human race. Notice how Satan got that scientific age back there of Noah's to lean upon their own understanding. Huh. 
the Bible tells us in Proverbs, lean not to our own understanding. Amen. And let every man's word be a lie and God's be true. But Satan, by his knowledge, from the beginning of the Garden of Eden, got the people to lean upon their own understanding. And you know, through his great Max Factor's works that he had back there, he got women so fair that it caused the Son of Man, the sons of God, rather, to fall to sin and marry them. He, women were so fair, so pretty. Now, you take the ordinary woman on the street today. A lot of you have read the story. You never heard it because before my days. Pearl Bryant. How many of you ever heard of her? Sure. She's supposed to be the world's most beautiful woman. Why, well, being a school kid that goes in the schoolhouse today, boy, it's twice pretty she was. Why is it? The beauty of women is to happen in the last days. They've cut their hair. They put them in little girls' dresses. They put shorts and bikinis and ever what you call on. They put paint and rouge and all these kind of things to make them something that they're not. Okay? But through scientific knowledge, they've been able to achieve this. Do you know there's more spent for cosmetics for women than there is in the United States? Twice or three times as much is spent for food to live on? Prove that. For cosmetics. Notice, the sons of God saw the daughters of man. Not daughters of God. The daughters of man, that they were beautiful. And it caused the sons of God to fall into this delusion and took them kind of women and married them. And it brought an age of prostitution, just like it is today, like it was in Sodom, like it's predicted to be today. That when men and women of this day swap wives, if they don't like this wife, they, they go over to Reno, Nevada and get married and uh, get divorced that one and marry again in 15 minutes. And women so pretty that they're almost irresistible. What is it? The devil! Amen. See, Satan still in beauty. Notice. Notice that sin was never forgiven them. That pretty scientific age was the very evil age that God destroyed off of the face of the earth. Amen. That pretty scientific age. Amen. Jesus said it will be that again just before the coming of the Son of Man. Is that right? Notice, Jesus said as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the coming of the Son of Man. When they all tried to marry, now watch, the sons of God married the pretty daughters of man. And God never did forgive them for it. Just the same as Balaam's teaching, that he caused the pretty intellectual scientific women of Moab to, with her flirty eyes, her paints and powders, her fine perfumes, to entice the sons of God against their own women that worked and had calluses in their hands with no makeup on and ties them over and let us marry one another because we're all the same people. That was a lie. It was a, a lie and an achievement of the devil to get the sons of God to marry the, the daughters of man. It was a lie of the devil for Balaam, that false prophet. To try to prophesy against Moses that tried to hold the race together to say, well, we believe the same God. We offer the same offerings. We have the same sacrifices. We do everything just alike. So close that would deceive the elected if possible. Okay? Okay. Come away from her, people. You have nothing to do with her. Notice, it was not likely that God would interpret his words to Cain's evil generation. Now, God would not interpret his word to them. Notice. God, the knowledge to make a world so pretty and scientific and sinful he had to destroy it? Would God do that? Make a world so pretty. Look here. 
God making his daughters so pretty and would dress them so sexy that his sons would lust after them and would commit adultery. What? God do a thing like that? This naked, stripped-off bunch of lady sins worshiping the God of this world through their ethics and education and shrewdness and prettiness. Come out of her, the Bible says. Be not partakers of her sins and don't receive her plagues. God will rain hail out of the skies one day as big as a hundred pounds apiece and will destroy her by stoning her like His Word always said He done. His law. Well, if God did a thing like that, revealed His Word to such a people as that, He would de- be defeating His own purpose. God's not foolish. He's the source of all wisdom. So you see where that stuff come from? It come from Satan. And it's still of Satan. And the church has believed it. Now you see, women, I'm trying my best to show you the Word of God. The Bible said if a woman cuts her hair, she dishonors her head, which is her husband. And her husband is a head with God. So she dishonors God and her husband. Now, this shows who is the head of this world's church system. That shows who's the head of it. It's Satan in the form of a superman person of knowledge. A super knowledge. He knows more than all the rest. And all that the Word says, he's got his own interpretation to it. See? The interpretation for this evil age. Notice. His plans to build a super-denominational church. The World Council of Churches. A super-denominational church. So that all the world will worship Him, the beast, under the name of United Christianity. Would you like to read that in the Bible? Revelation 13, 6 and 8. It's a modern Tower of Babel. Don't you remember how that Nimrod, the hypocrite, built this big tower and made all the other little cities pay tribute to it. Babel and Babel is the same thing. It just changes its names and as it comes on up. It's Rome now is Babylon. And the whole world is brought to Babylon. And it's brought in by the World Council of Churches which will make every one of them bow to her. And you've tucked the mark of the beast not knowing what you were doing. Because but those who are elected will hear the word and come out of it. Amen. How contrary is denomination to God's word? He never had one, never dealt one, and never dealt with one. I want some historian to show me. Wherever a prophet ever come out of the church. Show me where God ever blessed the church that was after it was organized. She went on the shelf and died with intellectual wisdom from the devil by their leaders and refused the Word of God as it grew up into this perfect statue of Christ. Now it's, it's ahead. How contrary. Separate from that unbelieving Eve, you children of the evening light. <laughs> Satan, God of this age, by his knowledge, getting the people to eat from his mixed tree of good and evil... Notice, Satan, by his knowledge, causing the people of this evil age to eat from his tree of good and evil, he says that he's building a greater Christian civilization by his knowledge of good and evil. A greater Christian civilization. But Christ's little virgin word flock bride don't care for his knowledge. She keeps free of him. What is about to talk about her a minute? She waits for her Lord and his millennium honeymoon. Right. With the word groom, as she is the word bride. Knowledge and civilization and true Christianity has nothing in common. Civilization and true Christianity has not one thing in common. Civilization is by knowledge. We all know that. And knowledge is from Eden, proved it by what he preached in Eden, and knowledge causes death. Is that right? What caused death in the Garden of Eden? Knowledge. Well, it can't be of God, so it's of the devil. Well, is that a good one? 
knowledge, science, education is the greatest hindrance that God ever had. It is of the devil. I'll get some letters on that, I know. I'm waiting for them. <laughs> Look what culture's got us into now. Huh? Look what it's done. Where are we at? We've leaned to those things to our own understanding by our science. You say, what about God? Do you think he's ignorant? Oh, no. God will set up his own kind of civilization on earth when he takes it over. This is Satan's world. He's God now of his worldly scientific knowledge, but God will set his own kind of civilization up. It won't be a civilization like this. You just remember that. It won't be the kind of civilization we got today. No, no. It will be according to his word and his purpose. For the God of this present evil age will be destroyed and his kingdom with him. This modern knowledge-loving age could have no better leader than the one they've got, Satan, a perverter of the Word of God like he started off in the Garden of Eden, but a religious person relying upon his own understanding, as I've said before, Proverbs 3, 5, that we're not to lean to our own understanding. They must have a God, for they are human, yet he makes them what they want as being a human being. Always, all human beings, when we come here, we found the Indians even worshiping idols and the sun and everything. As a human being, they must have a God. So this great intellectual age must have a God. So it's become the God of this world has become knowledge, denomination, science, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Notice, their God makes them just what they want. They lust for the flesh. And that's what he gives them. They want to wear bikinis, let them wear it. If they want to do this or that, let them do it. There's no harm in it. They go to church. Their mother was Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian. Just let them alone. That's the God of this age. Smart, wise, scientific. It needs no faith. It don't have to prove anything. It's already proven by their knowledge. Well, we're the biggest church there is in town. Their knowledge. Our pastor's got a DD, PhD. See? Don't need no faith. Relies on knowledge. Let them live any way as long as they come to worship him by their denomination and creed. And that's a big black eye there, but look at it. Laughs at God's word, saying things contrary to the word and tries by their knowledge to prove scientifically that the Word isn't true. Oh, what an age we're living in. See the God of this age? Notice. But God is waiting till the iniquity of these modern Amorites is filled. Amen. Don't worry. He'll have his Moses ready at that time. Amen. There'll be an exodus someday <laughs> to the promised land. There'll be a Moses come along who will call out, restore the faith of the children back to the fathers. It'll come one of these days. You say, well, look how we're progressing. Sure, the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. It'll come one of these days. Let them destroy themselves. Civilization, knowledge, perverts God's word to suit their own taste. Every denomination does the same thing. Satan then preaches his own gospel of knowledge in his own church. There's only two classes of people spoke of in the New Testament. The children of God and the children of the devil. Did you know that? You want to put a scripture down for it? 1 John 3.10. You know what the scripture I'm reading it right here got it wrote out. All right. All right. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, they are called the children of disobedience like Eve was, disobedient to God's Word. The children of obedience and disobedience have nothing in common. Then how can the bride of Christ associate in a denomination? When one's disobedient and the other obedient. How can one be the Word and the other perverted Word? How can a prostitute and a clean woman walk together in agreement? You can't do it. 
To have no fellowship at all. Come out from amongst them. It's of the devil. It's a mark of the beast. Heading right into it now. All denominations. I don't care whose it is. God's taken out a denomination of people for his name. A denomination won't receive these truths. It'll take an individual person that can see God and look at his word and believe it and belong no organization but live for God. Not for his organization, the intellectual wisdom of some bishop or something is taught us. That's right. The children of disobedience and the children of obedience has nothing in common. One of the, is of the day of light, the other of night and darkness. Evil age, this evil age of darkness, nightclubs, dances, yet belong to church. It's okay with their God. They don't have any condemnation about it. Nothing bothers them. Why well, don't condemn me to cut my hair? woman said. <laughs> Don't hurt my conscience. She's got no more conscience than a snake's got hips. So, certainly not. She don't know what a conscience is. It's been stirred so hard till she don't even know what it is. I'm trying. Walking around over the Word of God saying, why, well, that's some old fogey. Don't go up there. It's just a bunch of noise and carry on anyhow. <laughs> know no more about God than a hot and cot would know about an Egyptian night. Right. It's true having a form of godliness, but denying the power there from such turn away. For this is the sort that go from house to house and lead silly women. Oh, dear, you're, you should do this. Oh, dear, I think you're old fogey preacher down there. If you just, oh, you look cute in a kini or what you call a thing. You, if you do all this, that, and the other, well, a little cigarette won't hurt nobody. I belong to church, and you know our denomination is looked up to as well as anybody. Don't you believe that old painted up liar? Amen. She's lying to you. That's right. All right. Yes, sir. It's okay with their God. Oh, he thinks that's wonderful. And they just love him for it. <laughs> My, they'll argue with you. They'll stand right and fuss at you about it. Well, sure, Satan stood right in the face of Jesus Christ, the Word, Amen. and tried to say it's written. <laughs> and there he was, the vindicated Word of God. Amen. He said, get behind me, Satan. <laughs> just walk do the same thing. Like a fellow said to me one time, said, now, if you believe the baptism of the Holy Ghost is right, and you believe you've got it, said, now, you strike me blind. That was a preacher. Said, you strike me blind. Amen. He said, Paul uh, struck a, a man blind one day. I said, mister, how can I strike you blind when you're already blind? <laughs> how can I kill you when you're already dead? <laughs> he said, me? My eyes is twenty twenty. I said, you're a physical part, but you're still blind. It's impossible. The Bible don't interpret things. We speak where the Bible speaks. And silent word, silent. I said, all right. When Elijah was down at, at Dothan, see, there come up the whole Syrian army around. And the uh, servant right said, oh, my father. Said, my father. Said, the Syrians is surrounded us. Elijah rubbed his eyes, woke up and said, there's more with us than there is with them. He said, I don't see nobody. He said, God opened his eyes. Now, he was blind. And he looked around that old prophet and up on the mountains is full of angels and chariots of fire and horses of fire. Amen. And he walked out there and the Bible said he smote them blind. Amen. Blind to what? To him. He walked out and said, are you looking for Elijah? Yes, we're looking for him. He said, come on, I'll show you where he's at. <laughs> Elijah leading him to Elijah. <laughs> blind! I said, you know, I'm going to say to you just exactly what my Lord said to your father. Get behind me. <laughs> Notice, the children of obedience and disobedience has nothing in common. The disobedience worship their God. Uh, oh, they say, we believe the Bible. Yes, it's a mixed tree. <laughs> okay. They add the world and knowledge to it. Satan's tree, mixed. See, she took from Satan's tree. Good and evil. Amen. Oh, we believe the word, sure, but not all of it. He believed the word too. But let, let Satan take his tree and pervert it a little bit. That's what it is. Whosoever shall add one word or take one word from it, he's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Notice. All right, this evil age is of darkness, yet belongs to church. Their God, they love him for the way he lets them do. They have... No condemnation. Nothing bothers them as long as they belong to church. Balaam taught the church the same thing. Let us unite. We're all the same. It was the last trick. God never forgave them for believing such a lie. Remember, 
it was a unpardonable sin. Three times in the Bible, for any persons to add one word of their own interpretation to God's word after it had been vindicated the truth. In the Garden of Eden. Right? In the Garden of Eden. One word added caused death. When Balaam added the word that we're all the same, they, God never did forgive Israel that. Every one of them perished in the wilderness, except the three that God brought out. Every, Jesus said they're everyone dead. That's eternally separated. They're all gone. Never was forgiven. It's an unpardonable sin. Never forgiven them. Oh, my. Flee it, children of the e evening lights. See now who is the leader of this modern religious evil age? It's the devil. Taking that tree of good and evil and placing it out there. Notice. Bringing his beautiful church bride to the ecumenical council for a wedding. <laughs> Is a good Amen. Amen. This beautiful scientific church with all the, the, the degrees that can be gotten, the PhDs out of the Church of Christ, the PhDs out of the Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecostals and all, bring them all with their decorated fineries and big churches all to the ecumenical council. We are one. It'll never be forgiven them. A denomination, to wear the brand of a denomination is the mark of the beast. We've done been through it on here to do it. Flee it, children. Flee it. See? Great, beautiful church to the ecumenical wear. Wearing his mark. Shorts. Sure. Worthy dress. Sexy paint. Really good disciples of the devil to catch the sons of God. Marry a good full-born boy off into some old reprobate like that. It's Ryan. What a, you said, cutting hair, what's that got to do? Brother, let's stop here just a minute. I just feel somebody resented that. It might have been out on the wire or something. Listen. A hair to a woman is a Nazarite vow. Hair to Samson was a Nazarite vow. And when a woman cuts off her hair, she, she absolutely denies her Nazarite vow that she is a bride to Christ. Because there, that one thing, she spoils the whole picture. Amen. Correctly. A Nazarite is one that is consecrated for a purpose. Is that right? Yeah. Samson was consecrated to an age and to a purpose. Therefore, he had long hair. The woman that's a child of God lets her hair grow to show that she's consecrated to every word of God. Amen. If she cuts it off, I don't care how much she dances, sings, sings the choir, speaks in tongues, runs up and down, or has all kind of aid societies, she's dead. Amen. That's thus saith the Lord. Amen. The word of God, 1 Corinthians 14. She has denied her Nazarite vow and sold out to the God of this modern age. She doesn't. Now, shame on you, lady or woman. Really catchers of God's sons like it was, as Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah. The women fair and the sons of God begin to marry among them. So will it be when the Son of Man returns. And their God thinks it's great and pretty and scientific, knowledge, Hollywood fashion, style in his own shop. <laughs> sure. All this year gooey and stuff, you know. She, his church, simply loves it. Oh, my. I'll give you to understand. I am Methodist. I am Presbyterian. Our pastor's got better sense than to say a thing like that. He's got... Not enough sense to say the things that God says. Then. She, the church, simply worships it. She loves it. Just what she's wanted. She won't join up with nothing, brother, or come into nothing. She has to act like something different from what these modern Jezebels are called. That's the nature it's in her. 
How can you be any nature? Who taking thought can add one cubic to his statue? If you were born to be five foot tall, you'll not be six foot. Well, like Booth Cliburn's uh, stretching machine. Now listen, man, you bunch of rickies. If you were born to be a man, then act like a man. These bangs hanging down in your face and curled up like some sex appeal. Why, you perverted generation of snakes. Amen. What's the matter with you anyhow? Hallelujah. My God will judge this nation someday with fire. He'll sink it beneath the ocean. Amen. The hour of his judgment is his hand. Amen. The whole world will go. Religious perversion. Human perversion. Man don't even know what sex they belong to. Neither does women. Stand up with a pair of man's overhauls on or a pair of little old shorts clothes that are ever moving form of her body and call herself a Christian. She's not even a lady, let alone a Christian. She's a street prostitute used by Satan, inspired by Satan to send the sons of God to hell to fulfill the word that Jesus Christ said would take place. I didn't mean to say that. But he said it anyhow. Amen. See where this religious spirit comes from? The mixed tree? He said, what's wrong with them slacks or whatever they call it, pedal pushers or, or what it is? The Bible said that any woman that will wear a garment that pertains to a man, it's an abomination in the sight of God. That's thus saith the Bible. And a woman that will cut her hair dishonors her head. And it's not even a, it's a sinful thing for a woman to offer prayer with short hair. The Bible said so. Pray in public with her head uncovered. And her, oh, say, I wear a hat. You hypocrite. Teach them women such things as that. When the Bible said her hair is given her for her covered, not some man-made hat. What the Bible said. I'm not responsible. I'm only responsible to tell the truth. Amen. Don't be dishonest. The Bible said, handing the Word of God with deceit to, to fix or, or meet the request of a bunch of Rick Eddas. I got the word evil here. I got Elvis wrote down instead of evil. It's all about the same. <laughs> the word Elvis means a cat. And the word Ricky means a rat. When you say little Ricky, you mean little rat. What you call him, that's what he is. Your kids name that, change it quickly for the sake of the gospel. Don't name a kid. You never heard such names as that back in the Bible or in any other age. It's the age name for this age. There ever was perverted rats and cats that's there. Amen. All the j- million dollar this jockeys and these kids walking out here can't even go to, to school without a stink sticking in the ear and a little old transistor radio in their pocket, just boom de boom Oh, they come up there at the house and we made it. And them guys trying to paint my house up there. We said, get that thing out of here. If you can't work without that, then get off the job. It makes me so nervous I can't even stand around here. We've dedicated this place to God. We don't want that kind of boogie-woogie nonsense of this last days around here. I said, shut it up or get off the job. Notice, religious though. Oh, sure. Go right to church and stand the best of you with listening to Boogie Woogie. Also notice, Christ's word bride is heading up also. As we see where the Antichrist is heading, begin back there and now coming to a head. A ecumenical council will put it to an ecclesiastical head in the little church that's come along also Christ's word bride down through the age is coming to a head. Of course, it's going to be united back to its mate. Amen. Always, like the church and everything else has got to unite. The wheat, everything else comes right back to its head where it started from. Like Cain and Abel. Word bride heading up in the person of the word of God made manifest in this evil age that we're living. See where it's heading up? And Satan will soon take his intellectual bride and exalt this great one, which is the Antichrist, 
the hierarchies, and set him up on a throne, and the whole world will wonder after him. And then Christ will come, and two cannot exist in the same time, Amen. and his kingdom will be taken. Hallelujah. He'll be destroyed. And Christ, the Word of God, Amen. which the woman is a part of the man's body, they're not two, they're one. And the bride, church word of people called out from here and there for his name's sake, will unite in the body of Jesus Christ. And the kingdom of the Antichrist will be taken and destroyed, and Christ will take throne and set upon the throne of his father David and reign upon the earth for a thousand years. And then present the church to God without spot or blemish. Yes. Now, notice her long hair, Nazarite bow to the Word. I'll picture the bride of Christ now. We picture the Antichrist where she is, religious and everything, science. Now, the little, humble little bride of Christ just simply believes the Word. Whoever she is, it's the individual. I hope and trust that there's many sitting present, many listening in. And I hope that myself and every one of you all are part of that bride. I hope many, and it will. All that's been ordained to that will be that. Because it's their nature. They See, the Word can only recognize the Word. Amen. It can't recognize a denomination or a perversion. It knows better. It's a Word. Amen. See, it can't recognize. A wheat can't be nothing but a wheat. You start at a wheat. It'll head up a wheat. And a wheat can never be a wheat. Yes, it's watered by the same anointing. See? But it ain't a wheat. I said the other day about the tree with the different branches in it. Her long hair, Nazarite bow, shows that she's bowed to God. Her beautiful gown of His promised Word for the age that she's living in wrapped around her. Amen. Vindicating her with Himself of Hebrews 13.8. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. As she is a part of the Word groom, true to Him, in every point. Now look, if a woman goes out here and is married to a man, and she goes out and makes love with another man, and has affairs with him, and come back to her husband, he should kick her out. Is that right? She must be true to him, because she's vowed to him. And the bride of Christ is vowed to Christ, and he is the Word. Not even wink at the other side. A woman should not even wink at another man. She should make no signs, no emotions at all towards you. Or she is absolutely a bride to one bridegroom. We don't want to know your mixed trees, your denomination. Be true to Christ the Word. Amen. He'll vindicate it to be true. No, sir. Not even any emotion of anything towards making love to him. Not join his ranks or anything else or let him get you in his arms or in his care or, or talk to you over this way. That way you listen only to one voice. My sheep know my voice. Amen. A stranger, they're not. What is his voice? Any man's voice is his word. And this is it, the Bible. Not one word to be added to it or taken from it. Stay right with that voice. A stranger, they won't follow a denomination. As she is part of the groom, true to him in every part, waiting the wedding, uniting, not the ecumenical council, but in the sky, the waiting supper. She has been given, this is for our own church, the, she has been given and revealed to her the seven seal mysteries of the Bible. She sees the folly of the deceiver, so very close to the truth, that almost deceived the elected. She sees it. She see the two opposing spirits at work in this evil age. Can you see it? Each very religious, Cain and Abel, spirits again coming to their heads, still same as they started, one worshiping by beauty and by knowledge and by education and by science and by ethics, and the other by faith of the revelation of the Word of God. 
both of them standing right in this building this morning. Amen. That's right. Amen. Revelation, our faith in His Word, makes no claims of knowledge. The real, true Christian, you say, have you got a, uh, are you got a doctor's degree? <laughs> makes no claims. I, I believe His Word. Doesn't make any claims. Doesn't claim to be educated. Doesn't belong to any denomination, any party, any sect. It belongs to Christ. Amen. It's His wife. Amen. Not a church wife. She's a prostitute. The Bible said she was a whore and a mother of harlots. Amen. And they all come together to make the same whore. And that kind of a woman is a woman that's untrue to her husband. And claiming Christ as her husband and belonging to a denomination. <laughs> Such nonsense. Amen. We belong to Christ. But in obedience, this little faith woman that lives by faith, the bride, the person here or there, here or somewhere else, some other church, some other denomination, whatever it is, and some not, believes the Word of God. Obedient, waiting in love for the promise of the age to be confirmed. She's watching for it. She is part of that Word. And she's watching for her life to manifest that word. Brother, can't you see that? I hope that didn't go over you. The body is waiting for, which is the word, waiting for the life, which is the spirit, to confirm or make it alive. That's what she's waiting for. No other life will work in her. She can't come to life any other way. Yet she feels it out there and she knows it's going to happen. Then here it happens. Then she wakes up. God said, let there be, and she came forth, like the first one come forth. Children of disobedient means obedience. Disobedience means rebellion. I looked that up in the dictionary to be sure. Rebellion, rebellion against what? The revealed Word of God. Like Cain revealed, rebelled against God. Abel's revealed revelation vindicated of God that it was righteous. And Cain rebelled against it and slew his brother. The Pharisees, with their own denominational knowledge of what the Word of God was, selected hand-picked man, rebelled against the vindicated Word of God made manifest for the day Jesus Christ and killed him. Is that right? That's what the children of disobedience is. A rebellion against the Word of God. Now, see where they are? Oh, days of miracles is past. Jesus Christ not the same deal. There's no such thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. All that stuff is nonsense, see? Rebellion. They don't have to say two things, they just have to say one. That's all. That's rebellion right there. They can't say you don't have eyes, you don't have ears. You've got to take the whole body, the whole Word. See? The Holy Spirit call comes out of her, be not partakers of her denominational dogma uh, as he laughs and scorns at the word of God of this day. For God is not mocked. Just remember, she'll get it. Don't be worried. She'll get it. The Bible in Ephesians 4.30, going to put that down. Ephesians 4.30 said, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. They can't mock and make fun and say these things and get by with it. Like bread upon the water, it'll return. She is a devil's bride wrapped in his religious, sin-loving knowledge for this present evil age to deceive you. Oh, my. A whole clique or denomination of seducing spirits but scientific knowledge and a modern civilization claiming... We're going to close just in a few minutes. I'm going to have to stop because I can't get through it all. See? Claiming that she's building a great world for you to live in. She claims that in her civilization, she has built fine churches, colleges, schools, hospitals, libraries, and temporary help for a man without God's Word. She's done it. She's proved that she could do it. And the people have fell for it. Yes, sir. Schools, denominations, culture, 
better dressed people, better fed people. I'd rather it be in a bread line and be right with God than to have fried chicken three times a day and have to belong to a prostitute like that. You remember the hour is close at hand when the mark will come. You'll either be in it or out of it. And it'll come like a thief in the night. It'll catch you right in there and you're there. There ain't no getting out of it then. You done tuck it. Come out! An angel came down from heaven with a great shining face and cried out to the people that shook the earth, Come out of Babylon! For she's fallen. Be not partakers of her plagues, my people. Get out of her. Get out! And we just read it in the Word a while ago. An angel's a messenger. Coming down. Notice. The Holy Spirit come out of her that she be not partakers. Now, she's built all these things. She has built great churches. She has built college, schools, taking the people and educating them into a, a better so-called civilization, and they've educated them by a modern civilization that's brought them into the pit of death by knowledge away from God and His Word. Don't you see the whole scheme? Do you see that, church? Amen. Out on the air, if you see it in your own congregations out there, say amen. The rest of them will know where you're standing. See? Amen. She's did it. She's, it's a God of this earth. And she has built colleges. She's built universities. She's built hospitals. She's built libraries. She's built all these things for temporary help of man just enough to deceive them to get off of that word. And what she led him to, the whole church world is plunged into death. Amen. Amen. For God said that he would burn the whore and her children Amen. with an everlasting fire. Amen. Come out of it, people. Don't you be caught in there. You get away from that thing as quick as you can. By our scientific knowledge, she's been able to do this. Now, notice, without God's Word, God never did ordain us to go out and have schools. He never. He never told us to build hospitals. They're good. He never told us to build libraries. No, sir. He never. He said, preach the gospel. Amen. And the gospel is manifesting demonstrating the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul said the gospel come to us not through word only, but through the manifestation and demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, I never come to you with great words of wisdom as some doctor of so forth, but I come to you in power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit that your faith will not be in the wisdom or knowledge of the man of this world, but in the power of the resurrection of Jesus Amen. Christ because he lives the same yesterday, today, and forever. God help us to believe the same thing and God vindicate the same thing as He has been doing. He keeps you from seeing the true revelation and faith of God's Word being revealed and vindicated today by schools, libraries, literature, hospitals, and so forth. See? He keeps you from it. He is now interpreting, as he did to Pharaoh, trying to keep you from seeing the meaning of the vindicated word of his promised age in the evening lights, vindicated and proved. He's trying by his knowledge and schools and better educated people and ethics and so forth to keep you away from seeing that, anything, so that you won't look at that and see that's Jesus Christ. How you know it's Jesus Christ? He is the Word, and He's the Word of this age, and this age said that this would take place in this age, and here it is happening. Amen. Amen. He's trying His best to keep you from sin. He'll tack any dirty name onto it He can. See? He'll call it Holy Rollers and everything else. He called Jesus Beelzebub, and they call the Master of the House Beelzebub. How much more do they go and call the disciples? Amen. See? Trying to keep you from seeing the real meaning of the Word. Well, well, see, He's interpreting it. Say it means this. God said, I promised in the last days I'd send you Malachi 4. Amen. He don't have to be interpreted. He did it. Amen. He said, and as it was in the days of Lot, 
the world will be in a Sodom condition. And at that time, I will reveal the Son of Man by it. exactly. We got all kinds of impersonations and everything else of it, but we got the real one too. He said he would do it. He said the Antichrist would raise up and almost deceive the elected if it was possible. But said, let him alone. Let him go ahead. Their fault will be found out. Why? The word test proves it. Hmm? When he come to that word, been back this way, that, oh, I don't believe in serpents. I don't believe in this, that, there. It's never been revealed to him. Huh. Never. Oh, brother. Just look. We're, we're going to have to close because it's 12 o'clock. Notice, trying to keep you from seeing the meaning of the word of this age of evening light being in turn. It is, what does it mean? It's the time of exodus is at hand. God's coming for her, as sure as the world. Now, I want to ask you a question. Well, it is 12 o'clock now, five minutes after, and we'll go on tonight. Do you see the God of this age? Amen. You believe it? Amen. See how it is? A church, intellectual, science, a whole world belongs to it. See? The denominations. If you say, I'm a Christian, what denomination do you belong to? Well, if I belong to denomination, I don't believe I'd be a Christian. Now, that's a big word, but that's right. I just got through saying that knowledge and science and Christianity has no fellowship at all. One's of the devil and the other's of God. Anything that denies God's word, keep away from it. See? No, sir. The Bible calls this last days for Christians to come out of that prostitute. That's tree of good and evil. Sure she has good. Can anybody speak evil of a hospital? No, sir. Library? No, sir. Education? No, sir. But see, they're giving them that without the word. See how deceiving it is? Give them a church to go to, a worship to worship, a God sitting up on the throne. The Bible foretold it. Now, you belong to one of those bodies. There's only two of them in the earth now. Always has been, and will be till Jesus comes, and one of them will be destroyed. Now, you belong to one of the bodies. One of them you've joined, the other one you're born in it. <laughs> one of them you're part of because you're born into it, you have to be a part of it. Could I deny I got an arm? No more than I can deny any word of God. If I'm part of God, I'm part of William Branham. I'm, it parts, and every part is a part of me. And every word of God has to fit my spirit, has to fit my soul, has to fit my living, it has to fit my ideas. If my ideas is contrary to that, then God's spirit don't dwell in me. That's so why I can't deny one word of it. You belong to one of the bodies. Got to be. It's just got to be. It's either the body of God, which is by the word, or the body of Satan by the church. And the whole world, I have to belong to some church. It worships some God. You've got to worship either God of knowledge. You rely upon what you hear by knowledge. You rely upon this or that or the other. Or you rely upon God's word by faith, watching for him to vindicate it and make it true. The real church of God is watching for the coming of that glad millennium day. When our blessed Lord shall come and catch his waiting bride away. Oh, my heart is filled with rapture as I labor, watch, and pray for our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no temperature then after Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, peoples of this United States, where this message is going now, flee as hard as you can from this knowledge, scientific age that we're living in. Flee to the Word of God. You, I, no one can, can knows it. No one can prove it. God does His own proving. No one has a right to interpret it. Me, no other man has a right. God does His own interpreting. He made the promise. He said he would do this in the last days. And in the last days, the God of this evil age would blind the eyes of the people with his intellectual knowledge on a mixed tree of good and evil, still giving it to the people. And here comes that thing heading up, that denomination from way back in the dark ages and before the dark ages, all heading up in a superman, Satan, who said, I will exalt myself above the sons of God. And they'll listen to me. And he as God will set in the temple of God and the sons of God will fall for it. Why? The son of God say, well, my wife, she's a good... Uh, go ahead. Let's go on. See, you say, well, he said sons of God. Yes, sir. Man, whoever he is, was made in the image of God for the glory of God. And a woman is a byproduct 
for man, not of God. Right? When the sons of God saw the daughters of man were fair, they took unto them women. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Now look, if you want to know what stage the church is, watch what stage the women is. Because she is the church. Watch what she's doing. See? And in this evil prostitute age, look, there wasn't a meaner, wickeder, lower prostituting city in the world than Nazareth. And out of there, God chose a virgin. Could any good thing come out of Nazareth? And out of this evil age, where the God of this age has blinded the eyes of the people with their dogmas and denominations, out of that very age, God's choosing a people for His name. Though here neglected and despised, one day the Lord will bring His chosen ones within the gate, and that's worth everything. Amen. Then we'll sing and shout and dance about. The Lamb will dry our tears. We'll have one glad homecoming week the first 10,000 years. That's right. A wondrous people for His name, and they are called His bride. Is that right? Though neglected and despised, one day the Lord will bring those chosen ones within the gate in the Exodus. And that's worth everything to me. Amen. I'm good to be an old man. And as my days begin to fade out, my eyesight begins to get dim, and my little flame of life begins to burn low, I don't fear the darkness. For I want to say this to Paul. I know him in the power of his resurrection. No matter where they bear me, if I drown in the sea or burn in a furnace or eat up my lines, he'll call my name and I'll speak. Amen. 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 All right. Let us pray. If there be in here or out on the wires of this message across the nation, in your little churches and groups and halls and wherever you're seated, if there's one Oh, let me persuade you. Let me beg you as a minister of the gospel. Let me beg you in the name of Jesus Christ, flee the wrath of this wicked age. Don't serve the God of this evil age. Oh, I know you say it's good. They're fine. Exactly a mixed tree. You can't mix knowledge with God's word. It's a word that's to be believed by faith, not knowledge. You don't understand it. You accept it. You say it's right. And then you live by it. That's all he asks you to do. If there's any present here in our group, we can't make the altar call to bring you up here because there's not no room. Or out over the air. Over the telephone lines. If there's any out there that doesn't know him. Don't... Oh, women. I've scolded you this morning. Not me. I've only quoted the word. Short hair. Wearing them little old clothes. Dressing yourself real sexy looking. Don't you realize that the spirit that you may be clean, sister dear, when it comes to your body. But in your soul, don't you see what's got a hold of you? Would God make his daughter look sexy to deceive his own son, to lust after her, to make them both be answered for adultery? Would he do it, sister? Ask yourself that question. No, not but ten million miles. Don't lay that on to God. Brother, has God give you a spirit of this world to you can't see it that's wrong? Has He blinded your eyes to the ethics of the church, the denomination, the creed, and so forth, that you can't see that God is vindicating His Word and making it so has your job, has your boss, has your wife, has your children, has your church or anything separated you from the Word of God, which is the only source of life? Flee it, my brother. I love you with godly love. I don't respect any of my brothers above you. Not at all. If I did, I'd show respect to person. I don't say these things to make you angry. I show, say these things because they're in the Word of God and as a servant of God. 
If the love of God in my heart, I'd tell you those things so you'll see and understand. Maybe you wouldn't know if I didn't tell you. Will you flee it today? Now, with everywhere across the land, let's bow our heads. Dear God, laying before me is handkerchiefs. People are sick. I'm laying my hands upon them that you'll heal them. And I trust, Lord, tonight that there will be a great service, that the power of God will be here. Great signs and wonders. As we heard the results from these last couple of meetings, how tremendous. See what happened. I pray, dear God, that you'll give us a double potion tonight. I pray it with a sincere heart, Lord, because it's my love for you and your word and for these people. Grant it, dear God. If I, out across the land or even here now, that there's some that's sick and afflicted and has to be gone for tonight, won't be here, or be out there in the churches or places where they're met, I pray you heal them. Now, Lord, but for the greatest of all healing, if you heal their physical body from cancer, TB, pneumonia, something, they'll get sick again, no doubt, if they live very long, for their body's still under sin, the curse. But let them get the, the real divine healing, the healing of the soul, which makes a new creature, passes from death unto life, and then waiting in this old tabernacle for the redemption of the body if the soul has been redeemed. Grant it, Lord. May they flee them denominations and creeds. God, way out there in them creeds and denominations, I've met some of the finest brothers. And God, how can I say it if they'll see and let them see the Word? It bothers me. But I know again that you said, no man can come, no matter how good, how meek, how gentle, unless my Father has called him. And all my Father has given me, they will come. And Lord, I feel my solely responsibility for telling the truth. And not, as Paul said, handle the Word of God with deceit, with denominational dogma mixed into it as a tree of mixture of good and knowledge, good and evil. But with an open heart and the Holy Spirit, grant it, God, save everyone. Now, with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. And not to me. I can't say it this way. It makes me no difference whether you do or not. It does make me a difference. I love you. And I hope you don't think because I have to speak harsh. As Paul said, I'd like to be present with you and I changed my attitude. It wasn't because he didn't like them. He loved them. Not as Jesus had to rebuke them and then die for them. See? Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. To think a human being that wants to be right and trying to be right and to see that devil, that's what I'm against. It's blind the eyes of these people. This nation should be burning with the glory of God to see what's took place in her in this last day. This last... Why did these revivals hit the old countries? This is the West Coast over here. Where this West you can go. Now, the sin barrier has thundered down beneath the earth, and she's sinking. Places in Los Angeles and Hollywood sinking so many inches per hour. No way to stop it. Yeah, we're here. Most any time, we'll hear the summons. If you know that... Now, don't nobody look. But if you know from your heart, I'm asking you, I can't know your heart unless God reveals it. But from your heart... If you can see that you're not where you should be with God in His Word, in faith, would you just to Him raise your hand, say to Him, Lord, help Thou me. Oh, God, out of this church packed, packed around the walls inside and out, literally hundreds of hands, maybe 200 hands, raised up. Thank you for your honesty. Dear Jesus, don't let one of them be lost 
as your servant that stands between the living and the dead, pointing them with a finger to the Word of God? I cannot save them, Lord, but they want to be saved. And Father, as I have said many times, the sun rises in the morning. And as it comes up across the earth, it's sent by God to ripen the grain. To make natural food for natural living. But, oh God, you said to them that fear his name, shall the Son of Righteousness rise with healing in his wings. Let the Son of Righteousness, the Word of God, rise in the hearts of the people and the healing rays of faith in that Word cure ever disobedient to the Word and bring them to the fullness of the sons and daughters of God. They are yours, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, both here and out over the air, I present them that raise their hands to you for the salvation of their souls. Amen. There, my raptured soul shall find Where? At this altar. Rest beyond. By faith, I look over there where I'm going. Near the cross. That's where the word hangs. The cross. Yea, my glory, my raptured soul shall That's crucified with him. Don't want nothing of the world. Keep me crucified. There's the precious found. It's free to all the healing stream. Oh, young Calvary. Reach over and get a hold of somebody's hand. Say, God bless you, Christian. You feel this presence? Out there, over the waves of the phones, you all shake one another's hands out there and say, God bless you, Christian. You know, there's a pool of water back here. He's taken a people that's wearing his name. You haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. There's a pool, there's robes, there's man standing ready. You're welcome. If you truly accept Jesus as your Savior and believe that that is the truth, remember... There was never a person in the Bible or any time before the organizing of the Catholic Church was ever baptized any other way than in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no place found in Scripture or history that any person was ever baptized into the Church of the Living God in the name of the titles of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It is a Catholic dogma 
and not a Bible teaching. Being interviewed by a priest, I asked him that. He said, that is the truth. But we are the church. We can change whatever we want to. The solemnity is in the church. God is in his church. I said, God is in his word. And if the church is, I said, God is the word. And if the church is contrary to the word, then I don't believe the church. I let every man's word be a lie where he be priest, pope, whatever he might be, and God's word be true. And Paul caused every man, no matter how he'd been baptized, if he wasn't baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, to come and be baptized over again. And after some had already received the Holy Ghost, Peter said, Can we forbid water, seeing that these have received the Holy Ghost? Acts 10, 49. Seeing that these received the Holy Ghost like we did. And he commanded them, Before you leave the place, although you've received the Holy Ghost, come and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. For Peter was given the key to the kingdom, saying, Whatever you bind on earth, I'll bind it in heaven. And what does the key do? It unlocks something. The mystery and when Jesus said, Go baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, setting that there to blind the unbeliever. Watch. Why didn't Peter carry that out word by word? He had to. If a man is baptized in the titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, he's never been baptized at all. He has no name. Father's no name. Son's no name. And Holy Ghost is no name. Holy Ghost is what it is. Like I'm a human. It is the Holy Ghost. Father's a title. I'm a father. Son is a title. I'm a son. Human is a title. That's what I am. But my name is William Branham. And the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I come in my Father's name. What is the Father's name? Any son comes in his Father's name. And the Father's name is Jesus Christ. See what I mean? If I told you to go down and... Get me something off of the counter down here in the name of the mayor of the city. How many knows who the mayor of the city is? My good friend, Rich Vissing. Well, you would go down there and say in the name of the mayor of the city, you say in the name of Richard Vissing. You people here in Jeffersonville knows who he is. And that's what he said, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost in him dwells the deity, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He said, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Peter, stand there with the revelation on which he built the church of who he was. He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And never the keys turned in heaven and on earth. There's not another name under heaven given among man whereby you must be saved. Why are you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ? For the remission of sins. Whosoever sins you remit, to them they are remitted. See? But if you don't think he's worthy and fit to be baptized, don't you do it. For when you do it, that does it. See? You get what I mean? I can hear my say the word calling, calling down there to the grave. I can. Won't you die with me so you can rise with me? I can hear my Savior calling me. What's the world going to say? Take thy cross, follow, follow. Now, if you haven't been, where? He, he is the Word. It's me, I. There's the pool. Where He leads me, I will follow. Where He our head. Dear God, the pool is ready. Now speak to hearts, Lord. 
may they hear Christ, the Word, calling them and go with Him all the way. I'll go with Him to the garden. I'll go with Him to the pool. I'll take on His name. I want to be one of the people He's calling for His name. I'll believe His Word. I'll follow. I'll never flirt with the world. I'll be a true espoused bride. I'll not leave off one iota of His Word. Every request, I'll be a real true bride. Everything He requests me to do, that will I do. If my coming husband wants me to let my hair grow, I'll do it. If he wants me to take off all this makeup, I'll do it. If he, want, he tells me it's the evil spirit, the evil one I'm flirting with, with these sexy looking clothes, I'll do it. I'll take them off. I don't care what anybody else says. I'll take them off. If he wants me to come out of that group that I'm with of unbelievers, I'll do it. Though I make my bread or whatever it is he promised he'd never leave me nor forsake me, I'll, I'll do it. I'll go with him all the way. If he wants me to be baptized in his name, I'll do it. Lord, you promised it in your word here. That's what you wanted. May every person see it, Lord, and sweetly, humbly bow to it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You belong to God. May God take the little broken words and make them real to you is my sincere prayer. Amen. The pool will be ready. Anybody wants to come, they have the minister will announce that a little later. Anybody that's repented and wants to be baptized using the name of Jesus Christ, you just come right ahead. Everything's ready. All things are ready. Everything that we can do to help you to live for God, we're here to do it. Amen. God bless you. Now, let us stand. Amen. Now, our little song, I love him. I love him because he first loved me. Let's sing it, everybody now. I Let's raise our hands as we sing it. I love and hearts bow now. Let's hum it to him. Mm-hmm. Love him. Mm-hmm. Oh God, our Father, be merciful to us poor creatures, Lord. Strengthen us for the job that lays ahead. Help me, oh God. Help me. I feel that something's laying right out here, Father. Help me, O oh God, to know the truth. Bless these people, dear God. Lead them. I pray in Jesus' name. Now, while we bow our heads, I'm going to ask the pastor here, Brother Neville, our precious brother, step right up here now and say what he's going to do about whether about the baptism. I might announce that. I think the pool's open, though. Yeah.